<laughs> I got the mic. <laughs> All right. Well, lots going on, and we just want to kick off this year with some powerful stuff. So just wanted you to see what we did last year and just get look forward to what is in store for this year. Get involved. Let's grow. Amen. Amen. Get your Bibles. Get it in the air. Make the devil nervous. Come on. Here we go. Say, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. I can have. I can have. What the Word of God. What the Word of God. Says I can have. Says I can I have. I can do. I can do. What the Word of God. What the Word of God. Says I can do. Says I can do. And I am. And I am. What the Word of God. What the Word of God. Says I am. Says I am. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for your Word. It is the, it is truth in a world where there's a lot of deception. And so, Father, we are building our life on the solid foundation of your word. So, Father, we just thank you for the Holy Spirit revealing and showing and uh, building our lives up through it in Jesus' name. Everyone said? Amen. 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 Well, we start with our main scripture because it is our anniversary, what this church was built on. That's right. 22, 23 years ago, I was asking the Lord, what is the scripture for our church? It is 2 Timothy 3.16, reading it out of the Passion Translation. God has transmitted his very substance into every scripture. So when you read God's word, wow, you are getting God inside of you. For it is God-breathed. Other translations say inspired. That's where we got the name of the church. It will empower you. Everyone say empower you. Empower. By its instruction and correction, giving you the strength to take the right direction and lead you deeper into the path of godliness. Then you will be God's servant, fully mature and perfectly prepared to fulfill any assignment God gives you. Woo, what a great scripture. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, we want to hit on just a couple of things. How many know what tomorrow starts for this church? Fasting. Fasting and prayer. Don't leave out the prayer. If you just fast, that's not going to do you any good. Okay? Fasting and prayer. It is time with your Heavenly Father, time with the Holy Spirit and, the, and Jesus. And so we're so going to have that, a good time. So let's take that time. Well, if you're doing the meals, all three meals a day, or you got just one meal, you can fast. Take that time that you would normally be feeding your face. Just spend that time praying right at the beginning of this year. So Yeah, that's, that, let, let's just stay there for a second because don't decide, oh, I'm just not going to eat, and then during that time I'll just watch TV. You're, you're missing the point. Instead of eating, take that time to be with your Father, your Heavenly Father. So good. So just uh, private disciplines at the beginning of this year. Jesus knows what you, he says. He knows what you do in your secret place. So what you do in private, he will reward you openly. And so I'm expecting you and me as we go through this year, what we do privately at the beginning of the year in our time of fasting and prayer, watch what God does. How many got some prayer needs and concerns you want to lay before the Lord? What if the three days you spend fasting is preparing you to receive from God in the months following in this year? Now, if you have some uh, health issues, be wise. Can I just say that? Can you be wise the next three days? And if you have some health issues, there are things you can do if you can't just say, well, I can't just go three days with no food. Well, then... What are you eating that may not even be healthy for you to eat? There's a good question to ask yourself. You know, can you cut out sugar? Are you eating sugar? I mean, all of us can do that. Come on. There are things you can do if for health reasons you cannot stop eating. Then cut out what, what isn't good for you. Make that your goal, okay? All right. We can all do something. Psalms 34, 8 says, and this is where I want you to go. Instead of complaining about what you don't have, it says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Yeah. Oh, the joys of those who take refuge in him. You know, Jesus gave instructions on fasting. When you fast, don't be solemn faith. <laughs> I would be or happy. Grumpy. I would be happy, but the church is making me starve. <laughs> you know, so so Jesus said, put oil on your face, put makeup on, 
Be cheery. Don't let people know that you're fasting. Do it privately is really the, the instruction he gave us. So figure out, ask God what you can do. What should you fast? And, uh, and then just expect God to bless. And, you know, you might want to go, you know, three days isn't enough for me. I want to go further. There's all kinds of fasts throughout the Bible. Uh, three, one, three, five, ten. Twenty-one. Twenty-one, forty. So figure it out and do that. And, uh, and a lot expect. of individuals in the month of January do the Daniel fast, which if you look it up in the, in the Bible, Daniel was a 21-day fast of vegetables and, and fruits, no meat. And so, you know, you start studying it. We have resources in the back. Uh, 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 I'm trying to think of the author's name. Uh, Jensen Franklin. Jensen one Franklin has an amazing book on fasting, and it and it lists the different kinds of fasting. If you've never ever done this, start studying it. But do something, and you know, be be uh, believing God for things personally, but be believing God for things as a church. Okay, can you do that? There are some things we are believing for as a church in regards to to property and all of that. And can you just be believing God for favor? With, with all of that, and... Uh, VBS, our youth department. Yes, uh, yes. Men's and women's Bible studies, our marriages. I mean, right there, things, the vision is on fast. the wall. Be praying and believing for the vision here. Yep. Amen. All right, next thing that uh, we just want to talk about at the beginning of this year is uh, getting into a Bible reading plan. Uh, if you've never read through your Bible this is your year. You need to read through your Bible. This is God speaking to you. And to neglect the voice of God in your life, you're doing yourself a disservice. So get into a Bible reading plan. And uh, that is so important. And, you know, it's like, well, the whole Bible's too much. How many? Read through the New Testament. The New Testament's easy. And that is really where we live as New Testament believers. We live out the New Testament, how to be a Christian, and how that life looks like is all found in the New Testament. At least read through the New Testament this year. Now, uh, a lot of you took, we had a, we had bookmarks with Bible reading plan. And y'all laid them up. And I'm so excited that we sold out of them. We didn't, we didn't sell them. We gave them, but we, we, uh, we have ordered more for you. I was hoping they'd be here by this Sunday, but they're probably still in the mail. So by next Sunday, if you are wanting one of those, we've got those available for you. Um, they're three months at a time on a bookmark. So that just you just take one for the three months, and then you go back and get your next three months. So make that a priority. God speaking to you. God, I mean, when you think God is the God of the universe, the sun, moon, stars, and that he created you, Man, let's just give him some time. He deserves it. The world is a crazy place to live, and we need to be dialed into him. Mm-hmm. He it, is coming back for us real soon. You and I went through some things together of the benefits that we saw in reading the Bible, and I just want to uh, be able to, to rattle those off because and they're so sake, good. For time's sake, you came up with the perfect number. Seven? Seven. Okay. But there are many, many more. There are many more, but we came up with seven. So the first one is, it gives you wisdom. Write it down. If you are in the Word, you are guaranteed wisdom. The Bible tells you that. That is a promise in the Bible, that you gain wisdom when you read it. Can everybody say wisdom? Wisdom. Come on, say it again. Wisdom. Wisdom. Okay, the second benefit. The Word of God gives you peace. And we live in a chaotic world. So I think more of God's Word and less of the daily news will give you more peace. If you have those two backwards, I'm challenging you today. If you spend more time watching the news than you do in the Word, can you flip-flop that? You might find your peace level go up. Most definitely, you will find your peace level go up. (laughs) Number three, it will grow your faith. It will grow your faith. How many want more faith? Okay, then get into the Word. Man, you have a chance in the next three days, if you take it, 
to be able to get in the Word on your lunch break, on your job. Get into the Word. Get into the Word. If you don't have a Bible app on your phone, come on, get your Bible app. Get the U version. Let's go. It'll grow you. And number four, it will renew your mind. Woo-hoo. I mean, you know, we think some weird things. I mean, just where did that thought come from? Okay, I got to give a, a quick example. A quick example. Not so, about me, please. Not me. Not this. It's time. not about you. Okay. <laughs> this particular week, um, I had a. How many ever have um, like extended family times that are a little bit challenging? I know, you're raising your hand over the TV. I saw that. So um, I had one that was just, it was those kind that, you know, you go to bed at night and you're like, wow, that was a lot. And you're going over it and over and over it. And I was trying to dismiss it. And at four in the morning, I finally got up and said, I give up. And you know what I did? This this. I had to renew my mind. My mind, all it was hearing was a bunch of ugh. And I was like, I'm tired of the ugh. I'm going to go to this. And then I fell asleep like a baby after I got into this. You can renew your mind by the word of God. If you have haunting things from your past that just go over and over at night, then run to this, you know, and go, go. I highly recommend, like, if you're in the middle of trying to get your mind to think on something different, go to the Psalms. Go to, go to even Proverbs. Go to some areas where you can, you can get comfort and let, and let your mind be renewed. Amen? Okay, number six. No, number five. 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 Number five. It will equip you. God's Word will equip you. Um, you know, sometimes we face challenges in life, and we just, it can be overwhelming. But, you know, um, God wants to equip you to face any and every obstacle that you come up with. And uh, so, be equipped. I was, uh, listen, somebody forwarded uh, something, maybe saw it on Facebook, but uh, he said there's a lot of Christians that uh, put on the helmet of salvation, but they don't put on the other pieces of armor. So basically, they're Christian streakers. (laughs) So that gives you kind of a mental picture right there. And so you don't want to be a Christian streaker. No, you don't. So you want to be equipped for every good work. (laughs) I never know what's going to come out of you. Okay, number six. The Word of God will heal you. Come on, everybody say heal. Heal. It will heal you. It can heal you physically. It can heal you on the inside when you're hurting. It will heal you. The Word of God is an amazing healer. We need healing throughout our lives. Every one of us in this room, I don't care if you don't even need any healing ounce of physical healing right now, there are things in your heart that God wants to continue to heal you. Every one of you, it will heal you. Number seven, and I think the most biggest benefit of all, sometimes while you're reading God's Word, His presence just shows up. I mean, He just shows up. The person, the presence of the Holy Spirit just shows up right there. Not every time, maybe not a lot. But every now and then, he just parks himself in your presence. And I'm telling you, it's like. Well, he's always there, but I think what you're saying is you don't always feel it. Is that what I'm I'm hearing from you? There are times when you're reading the word where you can feel the presence. But even if you don't have the feeling, he's still there. Can I get it? Amen. You need more coffee? Come on. Come on. Yeah, I heard it. Yes. Okay. It's coming. Uh, You can get coffee in just a few minutes. But sowing and reaping, and so uh, being in church, getting involved in fasting, Bible reading plan, that is sowing into your own life. And the Bible has a scripture on that, Galatians 6, verse 7, reading it out of the Passion Translation, 
God will never be mocked, for what you plant will always. That's an absolute. You know, it's interesting. I'm looking at what they're looking at. They have different passion. I don't know which passion they are, but theirs is different than ours. Make no mistake about it. God will never be mocked, for what you plant will always be the very thing you harvest. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so we want to plant the good seeds of God's Word, of prayer, of commitment to His house. And uh, when we do that, He is going to reward you. So make this year a year. You know, whatever the economists and sociologists say, the forecast for this year, just go, you know, I'm not listening to that. I'm listening to the report of the Lord. And what I'm sowing, I'm going to harvest in 2023. Some good things. Yes. Yes. So, you know, we've got, as far as you know, when you're looking at what you're going to change in sowing and reaping, you know, I, I just got to say, wonderful that you're here and you're committed to being here. You're committed to church. Isn't that awesome? So committed to church is a big deal. We talked about um, fasting. We talked about prayer. We talked about reading God's word. I want to read out of Galatians 6, 9, but I'll try and see what you got for Galatians 6, 9. It says, and don't allow yourselves to be weary or disheartened in planting good seeds. For the, the season of reaping the wonderful harvest you've planted is coming. Woo! That's a promise. That's a good promise. God is a God who does not lie. God is a God who always it takes his word and says yes and amen to it. So he said, don't get weary and disheartened. I have to pause there. Have you allowed yourself to get weary and disheartened? His word says don't allow it. For the season of reaping the wonderful harvest you've planted is coming. Would you stand? Amen. You just bow your head and, and close your eyes. Just want to give anybody in this room or those watching online opportunity to receive Jesus Christ. We are here to glorify and magnify his name. We are here for such a time as this. Your life has a purpose, and your purpose is found in Jesus Christ. On the count of three, I want to give somebody or several people an opportunity to commit their lives or recommit their lives to Jesus Christ. This is can be the greatest year of your life. And it begins by giving your life away to Jesus. Life is found in Christ. One, start this year off right with God right in the center of your life. Two, don't reject him. Don't deny him. Number three, raise your hand in this place and those watching online. Yes. Anybody else? Raise your hand. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. Thank Praise you, God. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Would you all pray this prayer with them and those watching online? If you need to get right with God, then this is your prayer. Repeat after me, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I thank you. I thank you for the blood of Jesus. For the blood of Jesus that forgives me. That forgives me where I have fallen short. Where I have fallen of your short best. Of your best. And I ask today. I ask today that you would be. That you would be not only Savior. Not only Savior. But Lord. But Lord. Completely in charge. Completely in charge of my life. Of my life. And I thank you. And I thank you where I've missed the mark. Where I've missed the mark. I am forgiven. I am forgiven. I am made clean. I am made clean. By your precious blood. By your precious blood. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Believers in the house, are you ready to go to another level in 2023? I am too. I am too. Let's do this. Amen. Let's do this. Matt. All right. Well, happy anniversary. Happy birthday, happy, whatever you want to say. 22 years. You know, 23 years ago, I stood on a mountain with Pastor Greg. Actually, we weren't even on the top of the mountain. We were training for a mountain. And he got tears in his eyes. And he said, I just want to help people. 
That's the heart of your pastors. That's the heart of 22 years serving. Green makeup, paint, whatever it takes. Tights. I'll stop there. But God is good, amen? And not just for 22 years, forever. And if you sow in here, God's got some seed for you. He's got some harvest for you. He's got some opportunity. Man, I look, going through these videos, and you see people who weren't here, and then they're here, and then they're, boom, blossoming. The people that have flown through and have blossomed where they planted. Amen? So we want you to blossom. So get planted. And in doing so, we got a party. So we got cupcakes coming. If you're new, we have a hospitality area about outside the tent. We want you to stop by, see the leadership team, the pastors, and everybody. So the, Corey's going to do his thing with the cupcakes and everything. But let's pray real quick, and we just uh, thank you for coming. So, Father God, we just thank you for a great day. We thank you for 22 years of faithfulness. We thank you, Father God, for the heart of God, loving the people, Father God. And we pray that your spirit would just continue to move over Inspiration Bible Church, continue to have a legacy of love, service, ministry, devotion, time in your presence. Father God, we just thank you for committing ourselves to you, and we worship you in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great day. Oh, God is with us. Oh, oh, oh.